I made an amateur mistake, I'm an idiot. I, it cost me a few hundred dollars, about $500. It cost me quite a few hours of time and it cost me three horsepower. It really didn't, I found it. But to find it cost me, you know, quite a bit of money and time. Full on amateur mistake, full on, I'm adult, I apologize, I'm a dumbass at this point. So let's figure out why I'm a dumbass and hopefully it helps you with that uh, to not be one. Um, apparently, now that there's some comments, now that I allow comments on some of these things, some people find my demeanor brash. I, I have to say, I could care less. You're an idiot. You're a dumbass too. If, you're, if you keep watching the videos and you keep finding it offensive, you're a dumbass. <laughs> Go somewhere else. So why am I an amateur? Well, it's an honest mistake and it could happen to anybody and that's why it's worth it to share it because it could happen to anybody, honestly. I had a great gauge. It was a Craftsman gauge. It was 40 years old, a compression gauge um, from my dad and it was I knew that on my particular bike at 103 feet above sea level with the, um, the fattest KTM base gaskets, 33 thousandths thick, the stock head insert, you know, everything in good condition. I knew that with that gauge, the thing was pumping out 230 pounds of compression, which is too high, but that's what it was. That's when the base gasket stack came a little bit low. And as talking to John, he's at 600 feet above sea level. And, you know, he's like, yeah, I'm right there about the same thing. Well, once I put another 10,000 space gasket in there, raised everything up, the squish, every, the squish got where it should be, the squish band clearance, 2.3 millimeters instead of two. Um, then all of a sudden, you know, compression went down, the bike ran a lot better on the top end. But anyhow, I knew those specs. I have all that kind of stuff. I document everything because it's my job. So, you know, obviously it looks like I'm Barry Brown, <laughs> tan. Well, obviously it's been sunny out and obviously I tan relatively quick. So it was a really nice day out and I'm out working in the sun. Um, and somehow, some way my compression gauge got underneath the tire of the van, which I managed to squish. So now I needed a new gauge. Um, so I got this Motion Pro thing, you know, John goes, yeah, I use one. They're pretty good. They have a tendency to kind of leak, but you know, you can fix that. So I got it and sure enough, it, it pumped up, but it would bleed down pretty quick. It wouldn't hold, maintain the stuff. Replace the little gate, the little thing on the bottom of it, this little Schrader thing. And I'm not chucking Motion Pro under the bus. They make a bunch of great stuff. I've got a ton of their tools. This is just one time where there was an issue. So replace that and it got better, but it still bled down, but it would pump up, you know, it was pumping up to, and I'm, I'm breaking in this new bike, right? So this, all this stuff is brand new, new top end, and the ring's still cutting in on it. In fact, look at this picture of this ring right here, and you can see the shiny marks. You can see where the outside curvature is starting to cut in, and I want that, you know, that ring basically shiny all the way down, so it's, it's sealed. But it's still breaking in, and I figure, okay, well, that's why this thing's only pumping up to, you know, 190 PSI. Check out this picture right here. So now you get it, you see what I saw. So I'm getting back to running and everything and it's getting better and it's cutting in more and then this thing's going up to, to 200 and I'm going, oh great, okay, now things are falling into place, let's keep breaking in. But the power doesn't climb anymore and the gauge doesn't climb anymore. And the thing is, um, I'm comparing it to, you know, the other cylinder and head thing that I had on it. The cylinder's off to Pro Seal to get replated um, it was going to be my Bonneville cylinder. I think that's the best place to, pro, to coat things as Pro Seal, um, you know, over the Millennium and uh, US Chrome. So that's off. So, brand new cylinder on there. And uh, uh, what had happened at this, at this point? Oh, so those were the old runs on the dyno, and I'm comparing the new stuff to it. And I'm always about three horsepower off. Check this out.
See, that's a pretty big difference. My old line was the red line, and then the new stuff is the orange line. I'm chasing this stuff around, and I'm pulling my hair out. Obviously, I did a good job. Um, I mean, I even lost some nose hair on that deal, and ear hair, to get to the bottom of it. And I just can't figure it out. And I go, you know what? I, I wonder if this gauge is off. So I get another gauge, this cheapie off of Amazon. It's different, but it's lower. And then I get another one. I get a high dollar one, 135 bucks, brand new from Maco. Guess what? It's lower. But this holds compression. That holds compression. They don't bleed off, kind of like this one was. This is 175, and this thing's 200. This thing's like 185. So uh, I go, they're everywhere. I need at least two that read identical. So I borrow this Maco one from Alex Enduro. I call him Alex Enduro because he owns Enduro Works here in Squim. I haven't tried it yet. And then I got this brand new one, another one from Mighty Vac. So needless to say, some of this stuff has ended up getting expensive. And I'm wasting a bunch of time. So finally, I pump this thing up and it's bleeding down. And I go, you know, it's got to be leaking off somewhere. I wonder if that's if it's really holding back that much compression. So I start to squirt it with the water. It's just chucking the water, it's just chucking the bubbles out of right here. It's sealed up and it's tight, so I never thought about it. It's just chucking it out right here. Finally break it loose, I glue it up with epoxy, put it back on. Guess what? It pumps straight up to 230. I didn't know that it was leaking off that much, but I guess at that much pressure, you know, under 200 PSI, yeah, it's a lot of pressure that can, it doesn't look like a lot of bubbles, but obviously it's a lot of pressure coming out of there. So now it's straight back up to 230 and go, okay, now it's right. So I line my dyno run up with some original dyno runs up with the same configuration, same head, base gasket thickness, the same 230 compression, and guess what? They basically overlay. So there was my three horsepower. My three horsepower was a leaky gauge. So the point of this whole thing is you could really cut, go down a rabbit hole with this stuff and you're talking to other people online and your stuff is way off from theirs and you're trying to figure stuff out. Um, even this, if your gauge is leaking down, if it doesn't hold, obviously there's a leak somewhere. Start spraying it with the soapy water and chase it down. Two thirty. Tooth hurdy, Chinese toothache time. Next up, $30 Amazon. I'm gonna shoot this in a different place because I, the other one really got shiny. $185, cool. The $135 brand new Matco. One seventy. Good job. Alex Enduro's old Matco with the longest hose I've ever seen in my life. Two ten. Now, the mighty money back. There's another hundred bucks. This is getting exhausting. Well, holy crap. 225. So a few takeaways. One, I, I do really actually look orange like a <laughs> pumpkin. Kind of pumpkin with the shirt. Two, got my mic thing back. I figured that out. So thanks for the person that pointed that out. I just had to fix some interference with it, but I figured out how to do that. Um, you can see my frustration, you know, and this is, this is my job. So you can understand if I was that frustrated with it, now you can see why. Um, yeah, keep that in mind when you're talking to people. If you're comparing notes with other people on forums or the internet or uh, a, a dealer and a customer, that's a really good thing to keep in mind. 55 PSI, that's a lot between two gauges. I mean, that's ridiculous. And they're two good name brand gauges, right? So that sucks. Um, even the difference between Matco gauges, right? That's ridiculous. But I think it's kind of letting you know where things are made. Nowadays, countries, you can't even 
you've never even heard of, you know, that those kind of countries that probably make this stuff. So, um, yeah, good to know. Keep yourself from blowing up. Keep yourself from maybe spending a bunch of money when you don't need to do it, chasing down a wrong problem. Uh, so I'm going to go through a bunch of things. Now, this is all XC stuff, XC, SX. This is not the Fufu bikes, the T's, T Pro, um, XCW's, Hard Enduro. It's not those bikes. Those bikes actually have pretty low compression stock. So that would be, that actually has about 180 PSI down here. Totally different cylinder, totally different cylinder head, right? Different ball of worms. I'm dealing with the raised stuff, so it's still great food for thought, but don't compare these numbers to your, to your other bike or you'll get nervous. Uh, you know, and then next video I think is even more important, honestly, where we do some running compression stuff. You'll be amazed at the difference between throttle shut, throttle open, um, and throttle off and the reed assembly off. That's going to sneak and amaze you and real good food for thought about high compression heads and how they can really get you in trouble, that stuff. Correct compression is completely different than high compression. I think we need to get away from that term and I'll explain to you why. Well, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next time.